Richard Bernstein, your view on the same thing. So, so John, I think it's it's uh, the point about the second half of the year, I think, is very important. In some commodities and things like that, we're going to have pretty easy comparisons as we head towards the end of the year. And so I, I think the jury should stay out on whether the Fed is done or not. But I think that, John, that may be a separate issue from whether the reaction in the stock market and what's leading the stock market is correct if one believes that the Fed is near the end of the cycle. Well, let's talk about the data. Wage growth is still decent. Inflation is coming in. Isn't that good for risk, Richard? It's good. It's good for the overall economy. But if it's good for the overall economy, why is it good for only seven stocks? Right. I mean, that that makes no sense to me. If one believes that that the economy is going to have a soft landing, if one believes that job creation is going to stay healthy, if one believes that consumer spending is going to stay healthy, et cetera, et cetera, why would it only be seven stocks? That makes no sense. Seven stocks might be the correct uh, outcome if you believe we were heading for depression when only seven companies could possibly grow. But, John, I'll just point out to you that earnings growth in Europe is the same as technology now as we look towards 2024. Well, Richard, I mean, the problem it's is, nutty. as you know, they're just the seven stocks we talk about. Let's talk about Delta this morning. Beaten a raise. Stock is up in a pre-market by 3.5%, up almost close to 50% year to date. Take the top 10 on the S&P 500. Three of those stocks, three of those 10, they're cruise operators. So, Richard, is it just about seven stocks or is it about something else? Well, I think, John, look, I, I believe that the stock market is a seesaw and that we've got basically seven stocks on one side of the seesaw and literally everything else on the other side of the seesaw is attractive. So, you know, when we start talking about the broader stock market, we start talking about other sectors, I think they're actually quite attractive. Somehow that gets me painted as a bear that I don't like the seven names, but, but I think there's actually lots of attractive opportunities out there. Richard, we talked about the pre-pandemic regime, low inflation, low growth low interest rates. Any reason why you still believe we don't go back to that? Um, I think it's very difficult to go back to that right now, simply because the labor market is so tight, right? I think one of the things that everybody is talking about is the lagged effects of monetary policy. Virtually nobody is talking about the lagged effects of fiscal policy. We had, you know, the big Trump uh, stimulus plan. Then we had the Biden stimulus plan, the, the Inflation Reduction Act. It's hard to argue that that is 100 percent through the economy and the multipliers haven't been felt yet. And I think that's what you're seeing in the labor markets is the labor markets are being very resilient despite what mo most people had forecasted. So I think that to argue that, that the Fed should be on hold or the Fed should be cutting, which seems very extreme to me right now, when core inflation is four and a half to five percent, your target's two, uh, that seems very premature. Um, but I think that's starting to get baked into some asset prices. 